Hey everybody, it's Charlie Craven, and I have been just fighting with this fly for the last few days, trying to figure out a way to videotape it and make it clear for you guys. Um, and the fly in question is Jack Dennis's Parawolf. Um, this is a fly that's become more and more popular over the years, and uh, I think the reason is is that it's sort of a you know a small, delicate dry dropper fly, a uh, fly that you can fish a little a little dropper underneath with. Uh, uh, good visibility and uh, you know a reasonable chance of catching a fish on it. Um, and the slice is, is uh, the difference between this and a standard parachute Adams um, is that instead of the single parachute post, it's got um, double hair wings like a royal wolf or uh, you know any wolf style flies. Thus the para wolf name. Um, and it's a little tricky to tie. And I'll, I'll do my best to show you uh, what we're going to do. I'm going to lower this down just a bit. What we're going to do to uh, um, try to show you the, the pieces and parts. It's built a little, uh, well, I'd say non-intuitively, and uh, um, <laughs> in the course of the last few days, I'm beginning to wonder if it's just needlessly complicated. Uh, I'm not sure that those two wings are really any more visible than a single wing on a conventional parachute atoms, and uh, I'm not sure that it's worth the trouble to go to to make those two wings, but I feel like... Um, you ought to be able to do it, even if you don't like it. Then you can complain all you want. And if you uh, complain that a fly is hard to tie and you you uh, don't at least give it a good shot, then you're just being being lazy. Um, so we can't have that. Um, so with that, I'm going to start with a Tiemco 100 SPBL, um, and this is a size 16. And uh, you know, this is the hook that I I tend to tie most of my drives on. I like this hook; it's a little bit stouter wire. You guys know that by now. Um, and I'm going to start with some white 14 knot thread. And I'm going to start this just up here behind the eye. You want a, a fairly small uh, thread. We've got a fair amount of thread work to do on this fly. Um, so we want a nice small thread. And I'm going to dress the front half of the hook. And I'm going to leave the thread hanging at about the 75% point. And at this point, I'm going to tie the wings in, um, or the hair for the wing anyway. Um, and this is going to be white calf body hair. And I want a nice clean clump of this um, and you heard me tap that a few times in the stacker I'd actually stack that ahead of time so you didn't have to to hear me pounding on it um, you want a pretty good sized clump here you want enough to make two wings out of all right so I'm gonna take this and measure this a whole hook length long and I'm gonna lay this clump of hair in and tie it down with a band of thread. So you can see I've made a, a little band of that white thread there. Um, and with these butt ends, I'm going to lift these up and I'm going to come in from the back side. Now remember, I tie left handed, so I'm using the scissors in my right hand. I am right handed. Um, just to add further confusion, I really am right handed, but I tie left handed. But I want to cut those butt ends so that they uh, um, taper down to the shank and uh, Give us a little bit uh, of a of a taper that'll that'll sort of bleed in um, to the tail that we're about to put on. I want to make sure I've got any loose fibers in that wing come out, and that's sort of a good way to do that right there. You can see I tied that down, and then anything that didn't get tied down comes out pretty easily. Um, so now I'm going to bring my thread down that taper down to the bare hook and come all the way back to the bend. And once I get there. What I'll do is I'm going to tie in a little clump of moose, uh, moose hawk or moose uh, body hair for the tail. Now, the original pattern has got um, uh, a split microfibrid or tailing fiber tail, synthetic fiber tail. Uh, but this fly is a bulky kind of, um, you know, a tractor style dry um, in my eyes. Um, so I, I don't agree with the, the thin little tail. I like to use a little bit heavier, uh, you know, rougher water fly tail. So I've got a nice clean clump of moose hawk here. And I'm going to tie this in, measure it about a shank length long. And I'm going to tie it in at the bend. And I'm going to come forward over these butt ends to just short of where those butt ends from the wing start to taper up. And then I'll lift those up and again, laying my scissors in flat, I'll trim those off. And what that ought to do, and it looks like it's gonna, um, as I continue to wrap forward over that, kind of make a seamless joint between the tail and the wing so everything's nice and smooth there 
and I'll come right up to the base of my wing. Now at this point what I want to do is I want to build a thread dam and and stand this wing up. Now one thing that you may notice, um, and I'm not sure that you've got the exact right angle on it here, but um, I've actually staggered this wing just a little bit. You can see it's just a little bit longer on the front edge. Um, so when I stack that hair, I sort of tilted it a little bit and uh, canted it. Now when I, the reason for that is as I stand this wing up, um, that front edge is going to become shorter because it travels further. Um, so this is just an effort to kind of keep the two wings uh, more square and even all said and done on the finished fly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up the butt ends of this wing and I'm going to start to build a thread dam here in front. And you've got to sort of work back and forth. And with this small thread, it will take, you know, a lot of wraps of thread to build this dam. But I want to dam it right up against the base of the wing. And you can see as I come on top of the hook, the thread's in front of the wing, but on the bottom I bring it well behind. And that's to jam those wraps right up against the base of the wing to stand it upright. Like so. Uh, and you can see if I turn that a little bit, some of those hairs have sort of splayed out a bit. What I'll do to alleviate that is I'm going to grab the whole clump and I'll take a turn right up against the back of the wing, maybe one or two, and that'll group that wing together a little bit more. Um, I see on the screen there's a weird one over here on this side that's a little short one. We'll get, just get, get him out of the way. Um, so really, so far, nothing different than, than your standard um, hair wing fly. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the wing and I'm going to put just a couple of post wraps, like a parachute, um, around the base of the wing. And this is just to sort of gather this. And then I'll start to build a taller post. And I want to feed myself a little thread here. And I want to build a taller post. And I need enough room for three or four turns of hackle. Um, so I want to come fairly tall up that post. Um, and you can see as I pull on that thread, I can, I can actually direct where that wing is standing. And I want it to stand, you know, as upright as I can get it. Now what I've got, though, is my thread is coming the wrong direction. It's coming toward me. So I'm going to, to keep that tension, I'm going to make a backwards wrap and come around the base of the wing and go back the right direction. Um, so I've just used that thread tension to stand that wing up. Um, and you can see how the tips of the wing are all square now. And that's because they were a little bit longer on the front end, a little bit shorter on the, on the top. Um, you know, as that as that clump was sitting, and as I stood it up, that front end traveled further and became shorter and matched up with everything. I hope that makes sense. It's a little easier to uh, to show in a drawing, but that's just a little fine, super fine detail. Nobody else knows about it, seems, but um, I felt like I should explain that. All right, so now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to divide this wing and basically treat it like like any other hair wing uh, wolf pattern. We're going to divide this clump of hair in half. And I'm going to hold on to one side. I'm going to hold on to the far side. And I'm going to take the thread up from the base all the way up and make six or eight turns between the two wings. And I'll get my hand out of the way here. Let me get a wrap of thread around the hook. You can see where those thread wraps went from the, from the hook all the way up the post in between the two wings. So I'll take a wrap of thread around the hook to lock things down. And again, I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way here for you. This might show a little better. And now I'm going to come from front to back six or eight turns and then around the hook. And you see how that's divided those two wings. You can see there's a few little loose ones sticking out there at the bottom. Um, I don't know if you can see those, but now you can't. Just clean that up a bit. Okay. All right. So you can see that thread work. You can see that sort of grid work of... Uh, thread spiraling up the, the base of those wings. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my thread and I'm going to wrap around the base of that post to tighten those X wraps up that are dividing the wing. And you can see why thin thread there is going to make a difference so that we don't have all that bulk. Um, so we've got upright divided wings. Um, give you a little better focus here but with the thread post at the base. All right. Um, now, one thing I do like to do is come in and I'll hold on to this near wing and I'm going to post the base of each wing. And this is just um, with, with calf body hair, um, it just kind of groups that wing together a little better. And it doesn't take a lot of wraps. Um, three or four turns around the base of each wing. And again, you can 
wrap up and down the post to anchor that all in. If I grab this real carefully and hold it that way, you can see we've got the post down here at the bottom, and then we've got two nice square, pretty even hair wings. All right, now we're going to come back and tie in a piece of pearl crystal flash. Um, and this is going to become our rib. So I'm going to tie this in just along the near side here. And I'm going to wrap back over it to the base of the tail. Let that dangle back there. Then I'm going to pick up some gray superfine. And obviously you could tie these. We're tying the, the Adams version of the Parawolf. Um, you could tie these in whatever color you like. The purple one is awfully good too. Um, but I'm going to use some gray superfine here. So I'm going to dub that on, um, you know, honestly, maybe a little thicker than I would tie, a, than I would dub a conventional parachute Adams. Um, I just want a little bit chunkier body. And I'll get my first turn of dubbing at the base of the tail. And then I'll start to work forward, really right up to the back of the wing. And I want to build a taper there as I go. Once I get there, I'm going to take my pearl crystal flash and just spiral wrap that forward through the abdomen and tie it off. Alright, uh, now I'm going to grab a brown and grizzly, these are saddle hackle feathers, so they could be neck feathers as well. Um, and what I want is to strip the base so that it's equal to the distance from the hook eye to the wing post and then up the wing post. Um, so the distance is going to be from here at the hook eye here to the wing post and then up to the base of the of the post that we just created. Um, and I'm going to tie these in just behind the eye and I'm tying them in with the insides of the feather down, insides toward the hook and I want to anchor those good and tight there. And then I'll stand those two feathers up against the wing and just get a couple turns to sort of anchor them. Um, and very often these will start to spin. These are not. I was actually hoping for a chance to show you how to straighten those out. I may still get it, but um, what I want to do is post these two feathers to the base of that wing, right up to our division point, and then back down. Um, and it's not, uh, you know, not a great distance there, but you need enough to make a, a couple turns, you know, two, three, four turns to hackle. Um, in the case of this 16 with these saddle feathers, you probably only need three. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, now to finish them off, I'm going to take another little pinch of gray superfine. And I'm going to twist this down on the thread again very tightly. And I'm going to start this dubbing just behind the eye. And I'm going to dub up to the base of the wing and then behind, and back and forth in front. And as I run out of dubbing, I want to finish with my thread going, in my left-handed case, clockwise around the base of the wing. And really from here, this is just a parachute from here. Um, so I'm going to take my two feathers and I'm going to turn them so that the inside is now up. And I'm going to wrap from the top of that post down. So I've got one, two turns. Um, gosh, really, those two turns are plenty. Okay, um, and we've got two feathers there, so there's four. Um, and I'm gonna, I've am gonna, i got to tilt this a little bit so that I can see it. I'm now going to pick up my thread on the far side of the hook and continue around the base of the wing between the hackle and the dubbing. Um, two or three turns. Once you get one turn on there, that feather's tied off. Um, now I want you to see what I'm going to do here. So my thread, I'm, I don't usually need to lift this up, but I want you to see the path of the thread here. So as I, if I can get a hold of it all, I don't even know that I need to. Um, if I bring my thread out over the hook eye, I can drop it on the far side and then come up and over. And now my thread is going around the hook again. So now I can come in and trim these two feathers out. And I want to get right up in there tight with the tips of my scissors. Oh, I got to do it where I can see it. I'm trying to make this visible for you guys and trying to keep my fingers out of the way or maybe two different things. Trim those two feathers out. Um, I've got a weird little turn up hackle over here on this side. Um, anything that may have gotten cotton, gotten cotton, gotten cotton, gotten caught on the tie off, you can clear out. So 
So you end up with a nice flat plane of hackle, like so. Uh, then I'll pick up my whip finisher. And I'm going to whip finish sort of from the bottom side here. You can see I can kind of angle that in just behind the eye. Trim my thread out. And with that white thread, you can actually see where that tie-off is around the base of that post. Uh, but we've got two really nice little hair wings set up in there. A little bit of hackle left in there. Um, fairly even, still not as even as I like. You know, this the hardest thing I have with this fly um, is getting those two wings divided evenly because they're so short. Um, I don't know, I'll figure out a better way to do that. Or maybe I just don't, won't tie any more pair of wolves, you know. That's, that's an option, too. Now I'm going to take my head cement, and right down between those wings, I'm going to put a drop of thin head cement and just let it run down into all that thread work. You can kind of see it bleeding down in there and into the base of the hackle, um, and that'll just lock everything in there. Um, get my needle back in my head cement, and that is... Jack Dennis's Pair Wolf. I hope that showed well enough for you. I was, uh, you know, paying attention to my end of it, so I can't uh, can't see your end all that well. Um, but I just uh, uh, wanted to kind of illustrate that technique, and, and uh, hopefully we did a halfway decent job of it. Um, and if not, well, hey, you know what? Maybe you can't tie a pair wolf. Maybe you just fish a regular uh, parachute Adams, um, which doesn't hurt my feelings, none at all, because that's one of my favorite flies, no matter what any other... Uh, People on the internet say about you don't need the parachute atoms. Never heard any more rubbish in my life. Everybody needs a parachute atoms and uh, probably need some pair, pair of wolves along with it. So um, learn to tie, suckers. Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven.